and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are so excited to be introducing our brand new die set, Pop Up Bee. So let's go ahead and check it out. Here are all of the pieces of the Pop Up Bee. And the first part you have is the main bee body here, and you're gonna die cut that once. And then these decorative pieces here, both the stripes and the solid, you're gonna die cut those twice. You're also gonna die cut the wings twice too. And then for the inner part of the wing, you're gonna die cut that twice too. So you can see there's a little bit of a trend here. And we're gonna start with working on the wings first. So we're gonna take all of these pieces and put them aside. Now here we have some really pretty paper that we're using for these wings. We have some pixie dust cardstock there, which is a white sparkle, and then some pearlescent vellum for the wings. This looks really, really pretty out of white cardstock or blue cardstock too. We're gonna add some liquid glue to the back of the wing and then we're gonna layer that pearlescent piece vellum inside. And then we're gonna take the other wing there, we're gonna add some liquid glue to that, and we're gonna layer that over top and we're gonna be sandwiching that pearlescent vellum in between both of the wings. And you'll see just how gorgeous and delicate this is. It's so shiny and sparkly. Oh, I just love it so much. And now we're gonna repeat that with the other wing, which is facing in the other direction. So we'll add some liquid glue, we'll add our piece of pearlescent vellum, and then we'll go ahead and layer the other wing over top, sandwiching it together so that you see that pretty glitter from both sides of the wing. This is a three-dimensional bee, so you're gonna see all of the different little bee areas. So we're gonna make sure we layer both the front and the back. Next, we're gonna work with the main bee body. So these are the two pieces of the die cuts and we're actually going to be flipping it over and we're gonna be working with the back side of each of these bees. And the first thing that we're going to be doing is we're gonna be adding the wings on there. So we're gonna add some liquid glue actually all around the body because we're gonna be layering a bunch of pieces on here. But this is where we're gonna be attaching the wing. And I wanted to show you this nice close up so that you can see exactly where it's gonna land on the bee's body. And then now you can see it in real life. So you'll see exactly where we're gonna attach that wing right onto there. Then the next thing we're gonna do is start layering the rest of the parts of the bee. And this is actually gonna sandwich that wing in there and hold it together even better. So we're gonna add the little yellow base piece that's the solid piece, and then we're gonna add the stripes over top. And then we repeat it with the other side of the bee. So we're gonna add the solid piece and then the stripes piece. And once again, we're making sure to do both sides of everything because that's what's gonna give us this cool three-dimensional bee. And so now you can see we have one bee and it's got that little slit in the middle. That's gonna help us put them together. But first, we have to work on our second bee. And we're gonna repeat the same thing. So we're gonna layer that wing there right on that first little kind of bump of the bee. Then we can add some liquid glue all around and we're gonna be adding the rest of the bee. So we're gonna add the solid pieces in there and then we're gonna add the stripe pieces. So we're repeating the same exact thing that we did with the other bee there. They're just kind of mirror images of each other so that we're able to fit them in together to create our cool three-dimensional pop-up. So now we're gonna work on the rest of the bee here. We've got our solid piece and then our striped piece. Now that we have both halves of the bee all decorated and formed, you can see that one of the pieces has a slit towards the bottom and one of the pieces has the slit towards the top. And you're going to be feeding these into each other to create a three-dimensional bee. But the first step that we need to do is fold right along the base of the feet of the bee. So you'll see, you'll kind of find the little base of his feet and you're gonna fold the bee back. And you'll do the same thing on both of these pieces. So we're just gonna fold those little bee legs there back. And now we'll have that nice fold that's gonna aid in the pop-up mechanism. The next step is to feed these two bees kind of into each other to create a three-dimensional bee. So you'll see that you're gonna take the one bee there and then just kind of thread it through the other one. And you can kind of see how they're gonna go as you start to put them together. Um, and you'll see that we end up with one wing on one side and one wing on the other, and you get this really cute little three-dimensional bee. And then those little pieces at the bottom, you see both of the rounded edges to the left and to the right, and that beautiful stitching detail. And that's how you'll know that you have your whole be put together properly. Putting the pop-up bee on the inside of your card is really, really easy. So here we have a card base made out of some pretty pattern paper. We have our bee kind of folded in half, and what we're gonna do is add some tape runner to the back of one of those base pieces. And we're just gonna start with one of them. Once that's on there, what we can do is take that bee and put them right on the inside of the card. And then all you need to do is fold that card shut so here we go, right on the inside, fold the card shut. 
and that's going to attach one side of the bee. Then as you open it up, you just need to flip it to the other side. We're going to add some tape runner. And then I always like to make sure that everything's lined up nicely, of course, before we close the other side of the card. And then once you close the other side of the card, it's going to secure your pop-up bee in place. Then when you open the card, you get the magic of that adorable pop-up bee. Is that not the cutest thing you've ever seen? I just can't take how adorable this is. I love it so much. Now, you could leave the little base pieces black. I think that looks really nice, but if you wanted to kind of add a little coordinating paper or have it match your paper, there's a really easy way to do that. We cut the main B body there again out of the same pattern paper from the card base. Then what we're going to do is fold along those little B feet like we did earlier, but this time we're going to trim off the B. That's going to give us that little base piece without the B on it. So we're gonna do that once, and then we're gonna repeat the same thing with the other piece that's kind of the mirror image. We're gonna fold back along those little bee feet there, and then you can just take your scissors and trim that little bee right off. And that's gonna give us two kind of main base cover plate pieces so that we can cover them up and turn it into whatever color we would like. So of course you could leave it black, or you could go ahead and add a fun color or fun design or fun pattern paper using this technique. Then the next step is to add some tape runner to the back of each of the pieces, and then you're just gonna fit it right over top, and it's actually gonna slide in just perfectly. And then you'll see we can layer it over top of that black licorice cardstock, and now the bee looks like it's landed on this pretty pattern paper. Oh, I just love it so much. I just think it's so cute and so sweet. And now you can see this little pop-up bee in action. So as you open the card, you get this three-dimensional bee that I think would just make anybody smile. It would be such a fun surprise. And you can see, because we decorated all of the different sides of the bee, you can really look at him from any angle and he just looks beautiful. And that pearlescent vellum looks so pretty on the wings and the sparkle cardstock is just gorgeous. Now that we've decorated the inside of the card, we have to decorate the outside of the card. And so we're gonna be starting off with a small stitched rectangle and we're gonna die cut that from some white cardstock. Then we're gonna do some stenciling with the honeycomb stencil. And we are so excited to be bringing back this honeycomb stencil, it is so fun. It's got this great little mask that's included with it, but what we're gonna be using is actually that big hexagon there towards the bottom right corner. And so we're gonna layer that in the center of the card and kind of up towards the top a little bit. And then we're gonna use some post-its to just mask off any of the other little details that are on this stencil. And then we're gonna start with some inking with some sunflower ink. And we're gonna ink all over this entire hexagon, but what I like doing is making sure that all of my ink isn't exactly even, because having some areas darker and some areas lighter is what makes it feel really, really special. So now we're gonna go ahead and peel up that stencil and we'll be able to see this beautiful hexagon design. Next, we're gonna be using the hexagon shaker tag die set here, and we're actually gonna be using it on the front of the card. So we're gonna use that hexagon frame and also those little tiny hexagons too, and we're gonna die cut that out of some sticky note cardstock, and then we're gonna use that same sunflower ink to ink over it. Um, and that's just gonna give it a nice little distressed kind of look, and also bring it into the sunflower ink that we added onto the front of the card. Then we can add some tape runner to the back of these and then layer them onto the card. And right now we are recreating a card design by Callie. So thank you so much, Callie. This is just so gorgeous. So we're gonna take the tiny hexagons and kind of layer them underneath that frame. I think that's such a fun look. And now we're gonna take out that high five stamp set and we're gonna be stamping out one of the sentiments that says, you're sweet as honey. And we're gonna stamp that in some black licorice ink and it's just gonna slightly overlap the stenciling. And I think that looks really, really pretty. And then we went ahead and stamped, colored, and die cut a bunch of the images from the set, the beehive, the flowers, and a bunch of cute little bees. And we're gonna start layering these onto the card. So we're gonna add some foam squares on the back of the beehive, and then we're gonna layer that into the hexagon to kind of frame it a little bit. Then we'll tuck some flowers behind that little hive. And by tucking them behind, I think it makes it kind of have some really cool dimension. And then layer that cute little queen bee onto the hive, a jar of honey, and one of these little honey dippers or little honey stick kind of things there. And then we can add our other little bees with foam squares into the sky, kind of surrounding this really sweet scene. 
Now we're going to take that card that we added the pop-up B to, and we're going to take this little panel and layer it over top. And I just love this cute theme. You have this really cute B card, and then the recipient's going to be so surprised when there's an actual three-dimensional B on the inside of the card. It's just so sweet and so cute. Now, once we have this layered on the card, we thought it would be fun to add a fun little new detail. And we have a brand new hot foil plate coming out called Stitch Trails Hot Foil Plate. And there's all these cool different trails. And we weren't quite sure which one would look best on the card. So we decided to just hot foil all of them. And then we can save the extra ones for other cards. So we're gonna add these here on to our hot foil machine. Then we're going to press that button there and the timer light is going to flash. It takes about a minute with, with the magic of video, it's done. And now the timer light is solid. And once that's solid, we can take our foil and we're going to put that face down. We're going to take our piece of cardstock that we want to foil onto and put that over top. And then the hot foil machine comes with these two plates and we're going to layer that over the top too. Then once we have everything kind of sandwiched in there, we can take this whole thing and off camera, we're going to run that through a die cut machine and then come back and we'll be able to lift everything up and you'll see that we're going to have these beautiful hot foil trails in this like gold shimmer. Isn't that just so pretty? Now the cool things about these hot foil plates is that we have coordinating dies for them. So we're going to take the coordinating dies and we're going to line them up, hold them in place with some low tack tape and run it through the die cut machine and we're going to have these beautifully die cut trails here that we can add onto the card and I love that there's four different designs. So here, originally we wanted to use the heart, but it just didn't quite work with the design. So we're gonna bring in a different hot foil trail and see how that one looks. And that one is looking pretty cute. So we're gonna add some tape runner to the back of that, and then we can layer it onto the card and then just cut off any of the excess. And isn't that just so pretty? It adds the most beautiful little shimmery texture. I just think it's gorgeous on the card. And then of course the fun part is as you open it up, you have that pop-up bee on the inside. And is he not just the cutest thing ever? Oh my goodness, I just love it so much. He's so fun and just such a cool addition to a card. I feel like I wanna put him in the inside of every card that I make now. So here we have our cute front. And then as you open it up, you have that beautiful bee on the inside. Now there are some different ways to use this B and we're going to be showing you them in this video. We're going to be making a platform pop-up and we're going to show you how to use the pop-up B on the front of your card too. So let's go ahead and check those ideas out. So we are going to see how to put the pop-up B inside of a platform pop-up card. It's like pop-up on pop-up. It's going to be so cool. So we're going to die cut the platform pop-up main base piece twice out of this really beautiful what's sewing on paper. That's going to be some beautiful flowers for our B to land on. Then we're gonna go ahead and fold along all the score lines that the die creates for us on both of the pieces. So you'll see we have some vertical and horizontal folds and we're gonna make sure those are all folded really well. Now for this platform pop-up, we are not going to be adding any of the T-shaped pieces. We're just gonna add our quarter inch double-sided tape to the tab. We're gonna flip it over. We can peel up that liner paper and we're just going to secure this whole thing. So you'll see there, there's that second big score line. We're gonna fold up along that second big score line and then we're just gonna tuck that tab under and press down and that's gonna give us our three dimensional platform pop-up piece. And so we're gonna repeat the same thing again. We're gonna take that quarter inch tape and we're going to add it to that tab at the bottom of the platform pop-up. And then we're gonna flip it over. We'll peel up that liner paper. And once again, we're gonna fold along that second big score line and then we're gonna tuck that tab under and secure it in place. So we're gonna fold along that second big score line, tuck the tab under, and secure it in place just like that. Now we have our two platform pop-up pieces and we need to connect them. So we're gonna add some quarter inch double-sided tape to the tabs on the sides of both of the pieces. Then we can peel up the liner paper on one of the tabs and what we're gonna do is we're going to line up the two pieces and kind of butt them up against each other. And once they're lined up, we can press down on the tab securing those in place. Then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add some tape to that front piece of the platform pop-up there, which is actually gonna become the middle. So we're gonna add some tape onto there. And then we can peel up that liner paper and fold the whole thing in half, lining it up and securing that. Then the next thing we're gonna do is peel up the liner paper on that tab. We're gonna tuck the tab in and secure that down. We can push it from the bottom and now we have a three-dimensional platform pop-up. 
then we're going to put the platform pop-up aside and we're going to start working on the pop-up B because we're going to have a pop-up inside of a pop-up. And we're going to go ahead and die cut these pieces just like we did earlier. So we're going to die cut the main body of the B. Then we're going to die cut the wings twice. Then we're going to die cut the striped B twice as well. And then the wings twice. And this time we're using some blue pastel shimmer cardstock for those wings. It's so pretty. And then we're also going to die cut that kind of solid piece for the B out of some sticky note cardstock. Now we can start to layer everything like we did before. So we're going to take those wings and we're going to flip them over, add some liquid glue to the back, and then we're going to layer in that beautiful pearlescent vellum inside. And then we're going to take another wing shape and we're going to sandwich that over top so that you end up with a beautiful wing that you can look at from either side. And then we'll repeat the same thing with the other wing. We'll add our liquid glue, add our pearlescent vellum, add the other wing over top to create this beautiful shimmery wing. Next, we're going to take that main B base piece and we're going to flip them both over and we're going to layer our wing on. So we'll add a little liquid glue and we're going to layer that wing in that same exact position, which is just at the end of that first little bump of the B. We're going to do this on both of the B pieces. Then next, we're going to work on the body of the B. So we're going to add some liquid glue on there and we'll add the more solid piece there that's cut out of the yellow cardstock. And then we can add the frames over top of those. And what I love about this is that it kind of sandwiches that wing in there and keeps it really nice and secure. So we'll add liquid glue behind the stripes and then layer those on and you can start to see this B forming. And then the cool thing is, is you just are going to repeat the same exact thing with the other B piece. The next step is to fold along the ends of those little B feet. So what I like to do is just kind of take my fingers in and push that B back and we're going to fold along the little score lines that the die creates for us at the base of each of those little feet. Creating a nice fold, you can just kind of bend that B back and you'll see that you're going to get that great fold that's going to help create that pop-up mechanism. Then next, I wanted to show you my little trick for putting these two together. What I like to do is make sure that they actually form that little kind of B shape there in the center. So I take the two bases and kind of line them up. And once I realize that they are forming the opening on the inside and I have those nice rounded edges all around the outside, I know that the bees are in correct placement and now I can start to feed them in together. So you have those two slits there that the die creates for you and we're just going to take one bee and then we're just going to attach them together like that. And now we have our cool three-dimensional bee. Ah, it's so cute and so fun. The next step that we're going to do is we're going to fold this bee in half. And then we're going to work on putting it into the platform pop-up. So I kind of want to show you how it's going to go and then we'll actually add him inside. So here you can see that platform pop-up and he's going to go right in the center of that platform so that when you close it, he kind of gets sandwiched inside. So it's going to end up being like that and then the little base pieces will be glued down over the platform pop-up and it'll cover up those slots there. So we've got our B folded in half and we're going to be adding some tape runner to the back of those base pieces just like we did when we put the pop-up B inside of a card. But this time I'm going to make sure to put the adhesive on both sides of that B. So I've got adhesive on the back of both of the bases. Then I'm going to take that B and I'm going to put them right into that center of the platform pop-up when it's kind of like half folded down. And then I'm just going to push and secure both of those sides in place. And now we can push up from the bottom and then you have a pop-up B that's on the inside of the platform pop-up. This is all Grace's idea. I couldn't believe it when I saw this card and I was like, we have to put this in the video. It's so, so cool. So thank you so much, Grace. I just love seeing a pop-up on top of a pop-up. Now, just like we did on our card, I decided it would be fun to decorate those base pieces. So we cut those out of some cilantro cardstock. So it'll be a contrasting color to the pattern paper, uh, but also different from the bee, which I think is kind of fun too. And so we're going to bend back along the feet of the bee again, and then we're just going to trim that bee off. And now we're going to have these fun little panels that can decorate over top of the black licorice panels that are on the platform pop up. Then we can add some tape runner on the back of those and then just add them right over top. And you'll see they fit in just kind of like a little puzzle piece. Then we'll repeat the same thing with the other side. So we'll add some tape runner to that cover piece and then just layer that right over top. And to me, it kind of looks like he's landed on a leaf in this really pretty flower garden. I just think it's so sweet and so cute. 
And honestly, I think this is so cool that you could just add a little sentiment to the front and this could be your platform pop-up. But of course, Grace came up with some other really cool ideas and we're gonna add some more flowers onto this card. And we're gonna be starting off with the Magic Iris Sunflower add-on. And I love that you can use these Magic Iris pieces without the Magic Iris. And that's what we're gonna do here. So we have all of the petals there cut out of some sticky note cardstock, similar to the B, so everything coordinates. And now we're gonna die cut the center out of some chocolate bar cardstock. So we're going to line up that little center detail on the inside of the flower and we're going to use that little flower and we can save those brown petals for another card. Now these are meant to work in a magic iris to, to, to secure them together. I'm just taking a look at my stash of circles and I'm gonna find a circle here that's gonna layer over the bottom and that's gonna end up holding everything together. But before I did that, I decided to take some sunflower ink because I figured it's a sunflower so it'll be perfect and we're just gonna ink it from the inside of the circle and that's just gonna add some fun little detail to this and I just love this so much. The sunflower is my absolute favorite flower so every time I see one, they just make me happy. So now we have that circle piece that we die cut. We're just gonna add some tape runner to that and layer it behind the flower. And now we can just drop in that flower center. And now it's gonna be perfect for adding to our platform pop-up. Then next, I'm gonna add some white gel pen details to the petals and to the center of the flower. I wish I would have added some white gel pen details to the bee, but you would definitely need to do that before you put the bee together. So I'll remember that for next time. Then to fit it in the magic iris, we need for part of it to be flat. So I'm just gonna trim off parts of the petals there with my scissors. And now you can see how that's gonna be able to fit into the back of the magic iris. So all we need to do is take some eighth inch double-sided tape and we're just gonna add that along the very bottom part of the flower where we trimmed the petals off. And this is gonna help it adhere to the back of the platform pop-up. And it's almost gonna become like a little backdrop for our bee. So we can peel up that liner paper and then all you need to do once again is just line it up with the back and once you have it in a placement that you like, you can just press down and that's gonna secure it in place. And then I always like to close the platform pop-up and just press down again. And now you can see that really cool pop detail with the flower behind the bee. Now there are some leaves in the stitch flower frame and you could just kind of shop your stash for a leaf die. And we went ahead and die cut that out of the same cilantro cardstock so that it coordinates with that green cardstock that the bee has landed on, almost like it's landed on one of the leaves of the sunflower. And now we're gonna have even more flower fun. And so this is our cute, delightful daisy, my one of my other favorite flowers. I just love daisies so much. And so we're gonna take some double-sided adhesive sheet and we're gonna add that to some white cardstock and then we're gonna die cut that. And that's gonna give us a base for this paper pieced flower that has adhesive all over it like a sticker. Then we're gonna cut this flower out of white cardstock. And I've just gone ahead and stuck these all to a full stick post-it just to hold it in place for the video, uh, but in general, when I cut these pieces, I just kind of have the pieces everywhere and then put them together that way. But it's nice to keep them all intact for the video. So we're gonna take that frame and we're gonna layer that on top of that main base piece. And that's now gonna have a frame and then all of this adhesive, we're gonna be able to add all of our little paper piece pieces inside of. So we're gonna peel up the liner paper on the base and we're gonna repeat the same thing. We're gonna add that frame right over top. Now, one of the nice things about keeping everything on a full stick post-it is that when you add color, it makes it really easy to add some color to these petals. And that's what we're gonna do here. I'm taking a very, very light, um, kind of almost like peachy color and just adding it to the tops of the petals. And then I'm gonna take an even lighter peachy color and kind of blend those out. And now we'll have kind of like white petals with a little bit of an extra detail. It was really, really quick and easy to do. And look how cute these petals are looking when you drop them into the white frame. So we're gonna add all those petals there and then there's the little two that are at the bottom. And then we can work on the petals for the next flower, repeating the same thing, filling all of those in. For the flower centers, we have some sticky note cardstock here. And once again, just using a light yellow marker to add a little bit of detail to the edge. I like doing this with these paper piece pieces because you don't have to do a lot of coloring, but the little shadow just gives it a really special look. And then we can go ahead and peel those off and I'm gonna save all of those little centers and we can drop that in the top. And I just love making flowers like this. I just think it's so much fun. 
Now for those little dots in the center of the flower, what we're gonna do is just take a darker brown marker here and just color right over top of them. And then we can drop them into the holes. And because we have all of that adhesive on the back, it's actually gonna be really, really quick and easy to do and adds a really fun detail to these cute little daisies. We've die cut the stems out of some cilantro cardstock so that everything matches again and then just taking a green marker and adding a little bit of shadow on to the cardstock again. It's super quick and easy but it really just makes it feel special. Then we can start to drop in all of these pieces so we have our leaves and our stems and you can see these delightful daisies kind of come to life. Next, we're gonna work on the sentiment and there's these great stitched banners inside of these Valentine heart border backdrops. I just love these little stitched banners. So we're gonna die cut that out of some black licorice cardstock. And then we are gonna do some heat embossing with the high five stamp set. And it has all of these great cute little bee puns that are perfect for the pop-up bee as well. So we're gonna stamp the happy bee day with some clear embossing ink. Then we'll sprinkle on some white heat embossing powder, top off the excess. We can heat that up with the heat tool to have a nice bright white shiny sentiment. And this is going to be a great sentiment on the front of the card. And I love that it has the same black licorice cardstock as the bee. It kind of helps tie everything in together. Now for this first flower here, I'm gonna trim off one of the leaves because it was covering up the sentiment. So that wasn't really gonna work there. And then we're gonna kind of trim off that bottom part there. And that's how that cute little flower is gonna be on the front of the card. And it's gonna make it feel like the bee is in this adorable flower garden. So we're gonna add some tape runner to the back of these and then just layer those. And then we can add some tape runner to the back of the sentiment. We're gonna center that there onto the platform pop-up. And then we can layer the flowers kind of overlapping on top of that banner. And it's just gonna be the cutest and sweetest thing. And so now our platform pop-up is all done. And as you push up from the bottom, you get the cool surprise of the pop-up bee and this amazing three-dimensional card. And it's just such a fun and unique way to use the pop-up bee. I love that you can put it on the inside of the card or you could get really creative and put it inside of a pop-up. I just think it's just so much fun. And it was fun to kind of shop my favorite stash of flowers and add them to this card. It's just so cute and so sweet. And I love the three-dimensional look of this whole thing. And next up, Shari is gonna use, show us an even different way to use this pop-up bee. And that's to actually put it on the front of a card without a pop-up element. And this is so super cool. So take it away, Shari. So for my card today, I'm using the new pop-up bee die, but I'm going to be putting my bee onto the front of a card. And so I'm cutting off the little pop-up platform mechanism. So those flat pieces, I'm just cutting right along the score line that the die creates at the bottom of the feet. And I decided for right now to keep all the feet attached. I do end up cutting some of them off as I build my little bee here. You can see how those are going to fit together with that slit through the middle. So I'm layering a piece of yellow cardstock on the back side. Now the body is cut from some storm cloud cardstock, so it's not black, it's a very dark gray. I'm kind of going for some soft colors on my card today. And then I have put those together using that slit in the middle. Now for the wings, I have cut the solid part of the wing from some pearlescent vellum. And then I am layering it behind the open part of the wing, which I have cut from some fog cardstock. And I really like the way these turned out with that pearlescent behind and that fog on front. So it's not quite so stark as white with that fog cardstock as the open part of the wing. Now, since I don't have to worry about this bee popping up, I'm going to tuck my wings in a little bit further than you would if you were doing the pop-up bee. So I'm tucking them all the way in on that small part of the body there, making sure they're even on each side. And once those are stuck down, I can actually glue my bee together. So I'm going to take liquid glue and just add a few dots of glue onto the underside of the bee's body. And that way I can flatten it out. And those layers are glued together nicely. And I'm going to have one solid bee that doesn't move around. Now, this is where I decided that I didn't really like the look of those feet sticking out the back because it was flying, and so I'm just going to cut those off. I'm not worrying about the ones at the top because you don't see them at all because they're behind the wing. 
So next up I have a piece of speckled eggshell cardstock cut with the largest of the small stitch rectangle stackables and I'm going to be doing some stenciling on it with the new honeycomb stencil. So I've got that big honeycomb, the one that has the most open spaces in it and I'm just holding it in place with my magnets. I'm using some sunflower ink. I will also be using some number two pencil ink in a little bit here. And the look I'm going for is a honeycomb that just kind of fades off into nothing rather than having that defined edge of that big hexagon shape. So I'm just using a little finger dauber brush and here is where I'm pulling in that number two pencil. I'm just gonna do a few dark spaces. So I like the look of this not being super even, kind of a little bit splotchy, got some dark spaces in there and it's just kind of artistic. Then I can take my stencil and I'm going to shift it down and use the part that I stenciled to line up a few more of those hexagons and you can see that I can continue this towards that bottom right corner. So I'm just doing the same thing here, starting out with some of that sunflower ink. You can see that I am leaving some lighter spaces in the center. I just want it to be a little more uneven than usual. And now I'm adding some of that number two pencil in there. Then I do have a little bit left in that bottom corner. So I'm gonna shift that stencil down and line it up and finish off that corner with my sunflower ink. And you can see there how it has that uneven edge going diagonally across that background. I did decide I needed a little bit darker in that top left corner, so I'm just lining it back up and just holding it in place with my fingers. Now I'm adding some splatters to the background so I have that fine gold shimmer. I'm going to be adding a lot of shimmery things to this card. And once I get that looking the way I like, I can just set it aside to dry. Now for the little trail for my bee, I thought I would use the new Stitch Trail Hot Foil Plate. So I already have my Glimmer platform ready, nice and hot. I'm adding that gold foil face down and some Narwhal card stock. I'll add the two plates and run this through my die cut machine. And then when I peel this away, I'm going to get those cute gold shimmery stitch trails. This also has a matching die so I can cut these out and I'll be using that when I add the bee to my card. But first I want some little accent honeycomb. So I'm using the new honeycomb backdrop just to cut a piece of yellow sparkle cardstock and just get a few of those little hexagons. These are kind of going to be my embellishments that I sprinkle around lined up on that stenciled honeycomb that I did earlier. So as you can see, I'm just working on the placement of them, kind of scattering them around a bit randomly. I do like that a couple of them end up hanging off the side because that's going to show up with this narwhal piece that's going to be behind it. And I just like the look of extending that honeycomb out past the edge of this panel. So now that I've figured out the placement of all, all those glittery yellow hexagons, I just pick each one of them up and add a little dot of glue. I'm going to add a few more than what I had originally, just figuring out kind of where my B is going to go and what you're going to see so that they're nice and evenly spaced. And I just think that this is a really fun, subtle way to add some more embellishment and sparkle. So I'm using the Thanks for Being sentiment from the High Five stamp set, but I wanted the word amazing, and the word amazing is in the extra amazing add-on. So I'm just using that paired with the Thanks for Being sentiment, and I'm going to add these to my panel here, just lining them up. And then I will pick this up with the door of my Misty. I do want to make sure that I have room for my little trail and it's not in the way of my sentiment. I kind of like the way that's going to wrap around that word amazing right there. So once I've got them spaced, I'll just close the door of my Misty and pick all of those up. I am going to remove that B and that trail while I do my stamping, just in case I don't want to ruin my B. And then I'll just stamp that sentiment right onto that panel. 
Now I can assemble all my pieces to my card. So I'm starting out with that narwhal piece of cardstock that I cut with the largest of these stitch rectangle dies. Then I'm adding some foam tape all over the back of this panel that I stenciled and stamped my sentiment and did all my decorating on. Next, I'm going to add that foiled stitch trail around that word amazing. And I really like that that little end just hangs off the panel. It kind of goes with those hexagons that I added earlier. For the B, I am adding some foam squares. I'm making sure that I stick those just behind the body. I'm not sticking them behind the wings because I don't want to run the risk of seeing them through the vellum that the wings are made out of. So I'm just going to place him at the end of that trail, kind of centered in the card. And then finally, I pulled out some little gold glitter hearts and I'm adding those little embellishments around, which I think were the perfect final touch to this card. And I truly love how this card turned out. I think it turned out even better than it was in my head. It's just so pretty with those soft colors. Oh my goodness, Shari, I could not be more in love with this card. It's so beautiful, so shimmery, and so pretty, and I love the idea of using the pop up bee on the front of a card, too. It just gives so many different ways of using this die. And next up, we have some incredible cards by the design team, and this one by Maureen is so pretty. She actually added a second layer of wings to her adorable bees, and then she added the cute little die cut bees from the Magic Iris Beehive and the little stems, too. And what a gorgeous inside of a card. This card by Audrey is so pretty and I love that she used the pop-up bee on the front of her card with that beautiful watercolor behind it. And then Megan had the cutest idea and she created a little bookmark with this bee. How fun is that? This card by Elena is so sweet and I love how she used that hexagon tag die to add a cool background for this bee to land on. And then this platform pop-up by Grace is the one that inspired us to make ours today. It is just so fun and so cool. Now here is this beautiful front of the card by Callie that inspired us and then she has her beautiful bee on the inside. So cute and so pretty. Mindy used the four square backdrop die to create the look of a window and the bee landing on it and her beautiful sentiment. Oh my goodness, it literally looks like honey. It's so beautiful and stunning and I love this way of using the bee on top of the card. And here, great minds think alike because Letitia also created a really cute bookmark and I love the purple and yellow together in the gold wings so much. And then this card by Lynette is just stunning and I love how she added those little tiny bees from the Magic Iris Beehive. So we cannot wait to see all of your pop-up bee cards, so make sure to share them with us. Thank you so much for watching today and I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye.